Right, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, to have a blood ball ride. We come before your presence, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. And as he lifted up the bread. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He said, This is the body that has been broken for you. And as often as you partake of it, do so in remembrance of me. And this is the body that has been broken. And you may break at this time and eat. And likewise, he lifted up the cup and said that this is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. You may drink. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes we need to learn how to tarry and worship. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can you just thank Him where you are for one minute? Thank you, Jesus. Can you just thank Him where you are? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, Lord. We worship you, Father. We thank you for sending your Son. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, again, we welcome you to Perfecting the Saints Church International. Praise God. We thank you for being here this morning. And we guarantee you're in the right place at the right time. Amen. We want to welcome those who are viewing the broadcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to Perfecting the Saints broadcast where we teach the Word of God with precision and with balance. We guarantee you that you are in the right place at the right time. And we guarantee that this Word is going to change your life forever. In Jesus' name, we'll see you after the broadcast. Amen. Give them a round of applause. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we're going to do what we do, amen, this morning. This word going to be so good this morning, you gonna, um, you might think about slapping your neighbor. I'm here to tell you it's going to be so good. Amen. Hold up your Bibles and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says that I can do. It is the infallible word of God and final authority in my life. From this day forward, I will adhere to... This word to change and rearrange my life. Father, I thank you now for your infallible word in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity to minister to your people. And I pray that revelation can, will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. I declare all of you and none of me. Allow it to be so, Father, in the name of Jesus, by the way of your Holy Ghost, that burdens are removed, yokes are destroyed as he moves up and down these aisles, touch Illinois and set free, and affirm their deliverance. Father, we thank you for it in advance. 
And we're in full expectation for you to show out this morning in this sanctuary in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it and we give you free reign in here to do whatever you want to do. And we thank you in it and we just pray it in the name of your son Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Well, turn and greet your neighbor and then you all may be seated. Praise God in the presence of the Lord. God is a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. We Again, we welcome our visitors in the house. We thank y'all so much for being here. Praise God. Let's give them a hearty round of applause. Praise God. For the mere fact that you're here this morning, I want you to know that you heard from the Lord to be here this morning. And the church said, hey, y'all can't do no better than that. And the church said, amen, glory to God. Y'all know I like to make some noise up in here. (laughs) Glory be to God. Well, I got something for you this morning that I guarantee is going to bless you beyond measure. Um... And for you visitors who are here, we thank you again for being here. But I am not necessarily a preacher to where I do a lot of whole bunch of haunting and a hinning and a hotting. And I do a lot of teaching the Word of God. And I believe showing you in the Bible, line upon line and precept upon precept, what thus said the Word and the church said. Amen. Amen. So if you, in the process of me teaching this morning, if you get turnitis because you've been turning to too many scriptures, just bear with us, because that's just how we roll up here at Perfecting the Saints. We believe in teaching the Word of God. Amen? With that said. (laughs) You know, a couple of weeks ago I shared some things with you concerning our faith that should have shifted some things in your life. For the better. I believe that the clearer that we can make uh, uh, the faith messages and and give clarity to what faith is really all about, I believe the better chances we have to live the life that God has always intended for us to live in this earth realm. Amen? For the most part, the Lord said that walking by faith and not by sight seems to be the most difficult, even though I have made it easy. He said it seems to be the most difficult undertaking for my people to accomplish because we're trying to walk by faith and not by sight with our head and believe with our head. He said, when I have clearly communicated in my word that believing is always done with the heart. Amen? In other words, whenever we are confessing the Word of God, we're not confessing the Word of God to settle it in our heart. No, you're confessing the Word of God that is already settled in your heart so that it can get to your natural mind. Because once it gets to your natural mind, now I have a power of agreement, and now that I have a power of agreement, I can walk out what it is that's already settled. And the church said. And, but we've been doing it different. We've been trying to get it in our head so that we can get it in our heart. No, your heart already got it. Glory to God. And for a long time, we've been doing this thing backwards. We've been trying to process faith mentally when faith is always and has always been a heart issue. Amen? And you know, and the reason why it's so difficult for uh, born-again believers is, number one, because we've been conditioned to process things backwards. We've been conditioned to process things with our natural mind first, and once our natural mind gets it, then, of course, it'll get into the heart. Now, it's always, but when you're talking about walking in the Spirit of God, everything has to originate from the Spirit, and then it has to get to your natural brain in order for you to walk out what it is that you put on the inside. And the church said And it's time that we put that thing in perspective so that the born-again believers can start getting some results. And the church said, 
It's time for us to win. It's time for us to get results. It's time for us to stop living in despair. Glory to God. It's time for us to excel. Glory to God. It's time for us to stop losing. Dear God, how can we convince somebody else that our way is the best way if every time they see us, we are acting the same way, doing the same thing? You ask a born-again believer, how are things going? Well, they say the same old, same old. That is not the testimony of a born-again believer who walks by faith and not by sight. That's not my testimony. Ain't no same old, same What? No, that means that my faith ain't working. Are you listening to me? So we got to get to the point to where our testimony is amplifying our witness. And when our testimony begins to amplify our witness, please understand me, then it will begin to win people before our mouth does. In other words, sometimes we like to go up to people that, you know, are you born again? You know, that's cool and everything else. We ain't going to take away from tradition. But at the same time, they got to see something on you in order for them to really get the, in order for you to get their attention. Amen? They got to see that you're winning. Because a lot of times people, they will watch you for a minute and they'll hear you say, are you born again? They look at you like, shoot, I don't know if I want to get born again. Based on what I'm looking at, oh, I, I think I'm good where I'm at. Amen? Saints, we have to flip the script on that right there. Because as a born-again believer, we're called to walk by faith and not by sight. Glory to God. You are a new creature in Christ. And being a new creature in Christ, guess what? Right out of the gate, we breathe faith. We think faith. We act faith. We talk faith. Everything we do is done in faith. Because you're either in faith or you're in the flesh. This is one or the other. Amen? In other words, there, 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 there's only one default. You're either in the faith or you're either in the flesh. Amen? And if you're not walking in faith in any area of your life, then you automatically default to the flesh. Amen? Amen? That's why he says in the book of Romans chapter 14 that he says very simply that anything that's not done in faith is sin. Why is that? Because you automatically default to the flesh if you're not walking by faith. And the church said, are y'all ready for this this morning? In the book of 1 Corinthians, I mean, you don't have to turn there. I just want to tell it to you. Um, in the book of 1 Corinthians, you, it says very clearly, um, because with the same mindset, uh, a born-again believer is trying to process things with their natural mind instead of doing this thing spiritually. He says, because with that same mindset, we have a tendency to unintentionally try to unintentionally uh, uh, separate spiritual attributes that were always intended to run concurrent with each other, like faith and love. Amen. And when you look in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it clearly communicates to us, but we ain't, we're not paying attention. It clearly communicates to us that faith without love is like a blunt force instrument. Blunt force. Amen. Your love was always intended to be the governor of your faith. The governor of your character. The governor of your peace. Glory to God. But when you're dealing with your faith, your faith always has to be governed by love. Amen. And if it's not and it, without that governor, then you might have faith to move a mountain, but dear God, why you want to move it? Are you listening to me? So as a born-again believer, we have to get out of the habit of trying to separate certain attributes that are intended to be, that are intended to run concurrent with one another. Faith and love go together. And what we try to do, well, I'm trying this faith thing for right now, and that faith thing just don't seem to be working. Well, let me try this love thing for right now. Doggone it, that ain't working either. Well, let me try this joy thing over here and see how that works. No, 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 no. All those spiritual attributes go hand in hand with each other. 
And if they're not running concurrent with one another, then you're not going to see the manifestation of what you're believing God for because you're not combining them. We should know just by history that our Lord is a consolidating Lord. In other words, He did all the Old Testament laws and everything else and fulfilled it in one word. Love. Are you listening to me? So we got to take all the attributes and spiritual attributes that we inherited when we got born again, and we have to consolidate that and begin to walk. When we walk in the Spirit, you're walking in every single fruit of the Spirit. Amen? When you walk in the Spirit, you're walking in every single fruit of the Spirit. Amen? So we're making this a little bit more difficult than what we have to be making it because we're trying to do this with our natural mind and our natural mind is not able to process faith. It cannot process what he's talking about. Amen? This morning I want to teach on a message that is entitled, The Necessity of Faith. The Necessity of Faith. And you gotta get a you gotta get a hold of what I'm saying to you. As a born again believer, there is no other way for you to live. As a born again believer. Amen. Yeah, we're born in this world, yeah. But guess what? According to the word of God, we are not from him. Amen. You're born in this world naturally. That's cool. But you're not from here. You are not of this world. You are of another world. And because you are of another world, you got to come from where you are from in order to prosper and excel in this world. You can't forget what it is that you had before you got here. And he's given us a sneak preview of what we had. In other words, before you got into this natural world, you were somewhere else. Come on, come on. Oh, that might be too deep there. <laughs> Are you listening to me? In other words, you're a spirit that possesses a soul that lives in a natural body. Before your spirit inhabited your body, your spirit was somewhere else. With the Lord. Are you listening to me? And you got to hear this by the Spirit. Where you were before, we always breathe faith. We always think faith. We always speak faith. We always... That's what we used to do before we got into our natural body. And now that we're in our natural body, and we got reborn again, and now became a spirit, a life-giving spirit, we got to do what it is that we were doing before when we were winning. When we were winning, we were walking by faith and not by sight. And that's how faith is the currency that gives you the ability to win in both realms. It is the spiritual currency that works in the natural realm as well as in the spiritual realm. Amen? In other words, whatever your money came by, dear God, as you develop and build up your faith, you have a wealth flow, glory to God, to where now you can get anything you want, glory to God. Are you listening to me? You can get whatever it is that you want to get. But we have to understand the necessity of our faith. We have to know what it's for. We've got to know how it's supposed to work. And stop trying to process it with your natural mind. It won't work. If you try to do this thing with your natural mind, you will always default to the flesh. It's just human nature to do that. Because you'll realize when you try to process faith with your natural mind, watch this, you'll always fall fall short because your faith ain't working right. It's not working the way that you know the Bible says that it's supposed to be working. Well, well, why not? Well, because you ain't doing it with your heart. <laughs> Amen? Believing is a heart function, not a, not a mind function. 
Amen? Believing is a heart function. Romans 10 and 10 tells you, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. You can't truly believe what the words of faith say without believing it from your heart. Amen? You can't even pray right unless you pray from your heart. You can't even talk right unless you talk from your... Are you listening to me? So we got to get to the point to where we're understanding this thing so that we can start getting some results in our life. Because believe it or not, time is wrapping up. We are approaching the culmination of time as we speak. Now I didn't want to put this out there just so that y'all can get a revelation, get an understanding, just watch, watch what happens. If we, have, if we have 10 to 15 more years left, I would be totally shocked. And that's all I'm going to say about that. If we have 10 to 15 years left on this planet, I would be shocked, really. Why is that? Because everything has already lining up and lined up like it's supposed to be lined up. Amen. It's like this right here. In other words, the window, when he first opened up the window, the window was like this right here. Guess what? That window like this right here. You better hear what I'm telling you. You know, I wasn't going to get into this because that's nowhere in my notes, but you needed to hear that. Amen? And just like in the book of uh, Genesis, when, you know, when the great flood and everything else, and he got everybody in the ark and everything else, and all the animals in the ark, and then the Lord God shut the door. Remember one thing, Jesus said, I am the door. And when the time comes in the fullness of the Gentiles, when that time comes to where everybody's in that's supposed to be in, guess what? The door will be shut again. Amen? All right, I'm just saying. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let's define what the word faith, what is faith? Faith is the practical expression of your trust, of your reliance, of your dependency and confidence in the Son and what He has done. It is the practical expression of your trust, of your reliance, of your dependency and confidence in the Son and what He has done that's demonstrated from a rested position. What does that mean? That means to where now I am no longer toiling in my soul to make ends meet or to make a living. I'm no longer trying to hit a lick over here, trying to hit a lick over there. I'm no longer caught up with the anxiety and all the fear and all the trepidation of the things that can come at me on a daily basis that the world can throw at me. I'm no longer caught up with that thing. The reason why is because I'm walking by faith and not by sight. I'm living by my faith and I'm living by my faith and it's demonstrated because I remain in a rested position. And the church say, as a born again believer, you have been called to a place of rest. And you have to know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. Jesus like this. Dear God, I finished everything that I need to finish. And as I finished, you know, I sat down at the right hand of the Father, but my people didn't get the hint. <laughs> he said, my people are still toiling in self-effort. My people are still doing what it is that they were doing before I came on the scene. He said, they don't understand that they're supposed to be entering into a place of rest. Rest, rest does not mean inactivity. Rest means that you have a settlement of the mind of what Jesus did on the cross on your behalf. You have a settlement on, uh, in your mind that you are the redeemed. You have a settlement on the, in your mind that you are the just, that you have been made righteous, that you have all provisions available to you through the grace of God. You have settled that glory to God. No matter what this world can throw at you, you're still settled glory to God in the finished works of Christ. We're still settled. It doesn't matter come hell or high water, glory to God. You are settled, glory to God. You still won't be caught up with fear. You still won't have no anxiety. You won't go through none of that stuff. Yeah, it might look like a Red Sea situation, but guess what? I'm settled. 
Somebody say, I'm settled. You're settled in Christ. Glory to God. You're settled in the finished works of Christ. And guess what? Once you find your place, don't you ever be moved again. Don't you ever be moved again. Because the devil's job is to call you out. I'm going to use a different word, do a different term. Or to bait you out of that place of settlement. He wants to bait you with temptation. He wants to bait you with offense. He wants to bait you with unforgiveness. He wants to bait you with everything that he can bait you with to bring you from out of that place of settlement. Somebody say, I won't be baited. Don't let nobody bait you. Really? Are you kidding me? As a born-again believer, if you know your place, you will never be baited another day in your life. I know my place in Christ. Turn to your neighbor and say, do you know your place in Christ? Are you listening to me? We've got to be settled. We've got to be rooted. We've got to be grounded in that place that He has prepared for Every born-again believer, He has prepared a place for every born-again believer. He said, we got to get there. He said, don't be focusing on what the world can throw at you. Don't focus on that stuff. If you focus with your natural eye, I guarantee you're going to be distracted. <laughs> it's inevitable, amen? If I, Pastor J, focus with my natural eye, guess what? I'm going to be distracted. Amen? But remember this now, you're a spirit that possesses a soul that lives inside of a natural body. If we live in the spirit and we walk in the spirit, how is it that we can focus with our natural eye? Amen? As a born-again believer, as a new creature in Christ, it is imperative that we begin to learn how to do everything from our born-again spirit. In other words, dear God, we got to unlearn some stuff. We've been conditioned in selfism by the world system. We've been conditioned in idolatry. We've been conditioned in our, uh, the world's philosophy. We've been conditioned in all that stuff. But he said, now you need to be conditioned in the Spirit. Amen? Did y'all get that? I want you to turn with me to the book of Galatians real quick, chapter 5. Let's get into this. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5. I just want to show you something real briefly. So that you can understand what I, what I mean when I make the distinction between the natural and the spiritual. Because I'll be doing that throughout this message this morning. Amen. In the book of Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 22, it reads this way. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Did y'all hear that? Now, I'm going to share something with you that's very simple. And that you should never forget. All these fruits are very similar to natural emotions that we experience. But you can't get them confused with natural emotions that you experience. All these fruit go with your new nature. All these fruit are spiritual in nature. And the reason why I said natural uh, emotions is because if you try to relate them to natural emotion, you're going to get confused and try to process these fruit naturally when they're not intended to work for you naturally. They're intended to be spiritual fruit. And they originate from the Spirit of God in you to your born-again spirit and then release to the natural. Amen? Not from the natural to the Spirit. No, 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 no. 
they are spiritual fruits. And in order for them to work in your individual life, in order for you to experience these fruit, you have to be able to experience them by walking in the Spirit of God. Amen? That's why some people, you know, I tried that joy thing, but it ain't working right. Well, well, how did you try it? Did you really try it from your spirit? Because all these fruit that I'm talking about, they're actually a heart attribute. Not a mind attribute. Amen? All these fruits are supernatural in nature. How many of you know that the Holy Ghost is supernatural? Amen? So all these fruits are supernatural as well. And in order for you to see the manifestation of these fruit, we got to see it done from our spiritual side and not from the natural side. Amen? Believing has always been a heart issue. Having faith has always been a heart issue. And it's designed to benefit us as we are living in this natural realm. Amen? All right. Now, I want to turn with me, and I want to give you four reasons why walking by faith and not by sight is very vital to every born-again believer. And I want you to turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 3, starting in verse 9, and just say, Amen, when you are there. We got a few amens, but... (laughs) <laughs> Let me read from the book of, uh, Genesis, uh, book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 9. It reads this way. So then those who are people of faith are blessed and made happy and favored by God as partners in fellowship with the believing and trusting Abraham. And all who depend on the law who are seeking to be justified by obedience to the law are of rituals are under a curse and doomed to disappointment and destruction. For it is written in the Scriptures, curse, curse, or a curse devoted to destruction and doomed to eternal punishment be everyone who does not continue to abide, live, and remain by all the precepts and the commands written in the book of the law and to practice them. In other words, if you have... Determined to live by the law, please understand me, you will also be cursed by the law. The old Mosaic law. Amen. Now it is evident in verse 11, now it is evident that no person is justified, declared righteous, and brought into right standing with God through the law. For the scripture says that a man in right standing with God, the just, the righteous, shall live by and out of faith. And he who through and by his faith is declared righteous in right standing with God shall live. Verse 12. But the law does not rest on faith, does not require faith, has nothing to do with faith. For in itself, he who does them, the things prescribed by the law, shall live by them and not by faith. He's very clearly making a clear distinction between the old Mosaic law in the dispensation of grace that we're currently living in today. He said the ones who were living by the law, he said the law did not require faith. It has nothing to do with faith. Now that you know that you are living in a whole different dispensation and you're under a different administration, he said now you have to live by the law of that administration. Amen. The law for this administration is that you have to live by your faith. He says the just shall live by his faith. The just shall think by his faith. The just shall talk by his faith. The just shall walk by his faith. Do you know what he said? That the just shall walk in the Spirit. Amen? Because I just read you that the the attributes of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, faith, meekness, and all that other stuff. He says that you shall walk in the Spirit, you shall walk by your faith in order for you to excel, in order for you to access the favor of God. Because remember, that's how he began. In order for us to access the favor of God, we have to access the favor of God by our faith. He says this is the only way for a born-again believer to live in this earth realm and be able to excel in this earth realm because your faith 
is what allows you to hack the system and make it do what it do. Amen. And you got to understand that as a born-again believer, you have been given the measure of faith to excel, to prosper, and succeed in this earth realm. Glory to God. And you got to know that you have it. Not only is it important for you to know that you have it, but you got to know how it's supposed to work. Everything we do has to originate from the Spirit that, that's within us. Amen? He says that we are being called to walk by faith and not by sight. The just, those who are acquitted, those who have been justified and made righteous. You've been acquitted and pardoned from all charges of sin that was, a, that, was a, that was upon you before Christ came. In other words, there is no guilt, there is no shame, there is no condemnation. There's none of that upon any born-again believer right now because he says that I have already acquitted you. He said, just, you, you just got to believe it. You just got to believe that. Amen? Because sometimes when things happen in our lives, sometimes we get to that point to where we're, we're, we're condemning ourselves. We feel shameful and all of those stuff. He said, there is no condemnation to those who were in Christ Jesus. And you have to know that. You have to be settled in that. Because if you're not settled in that, when things happen in your life, it will always bait you out of that place of settlement. You will always be baited. Amen. Because that's the devil's job. He wants to pull you from out of that place. Amen. Turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians real quick. I want to show you this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I want to show you this real quick, quickly. In verse 17... Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It reads like this. In the Amplified, it reads like this. Therefore, if any man, any person is engrafted in Christ the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. But all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to Himself, receiving us into favor. Somebody say favor. favor. He said receiving us into favor. Somebody say favor. favor. Brought us into harmony with Himself and gave to us the ministry of reconciliation, that by word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with Him. Did y'all hear that? It was God personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with Himself. Somebody say favor. favor. He said that I have created you. I have recreated you. I have made you all over again. I made you brand spanking new. And as a new creature in Christ, He says all new creatures have favor. Somebody say favor. You have favor that's waiting on you. Glory to God. It doesn't matter where you may travel. You always have favor that's available to you. But your faith is the only thing that can procure it. Amen. You got to get that thing by your faith. Amen. It's like the grace of God has been shed abroad on everybody and everything else. And we're actually standing in the grace of God. But guess what? You really have no access to it unless you use the access code. Amen. The favor of God has everything that we need. And all your needs will be met according to His riches and glory through and by Christ Jesus. But He didn't only stop there. He said, I want to bless you exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. He said, I want to bless you in the city and bless you in the field. He said, I want to make you the head and not the tail. Are you listening to me? But you can't access it unless you have the access code. Are you listening to me? So as a born-again believer, we have to understand this faith and begin to operate and live and have it engaged at all times. He said that old things are passed away. What does that mean? My old methodology is gone. The way that I used to do what I used to do, I can't use it anymore. The reason why I can't use it anymore is because it became obsolete once I became a new creature in Christ. Being a new creature, you have new features. New creatures, new features. New creature, new feature. 
Did y'all get that? You can't use the old features. Why? They don't go with your new creature. You're a new creature. <laughs> Are you listening to me? You can't use that old stuff no more. How many of you know that you can't use dial-up no more? Dial-up's gone. Amen. And it's the same thing in the Spirit. He's trying to communicate something to us in the Word of God. And as He's trying to communicate to us in the Word of God, it's like we're reading it on the surface, but we're just not processing it because we're trying to do it with our natural mind. He's trying to communicate to us. He said, guys, this is what I need you to do. You need to understand, number one, that you're a new creature in Christ. As you understand that you're a new creature in Christ, there's the only one way for you to live. New creatures in Christ, we live in the Spirit, but as we're in the Spirit, we live by our faith. Uh, listen to this. Your love is the way of life. Your faith is the walk of life. Amen? Are you listening to me? It's something that we have to understand because if you don't get the faith thing as born again believers, you will always try to compete with somebody else who's doing it the secular way. You'll always find yourself competing with the world because you can't understand the faith thing. You'll always try to, you'll, you'll find yourself looking over the fence and seeing what's over there and be wondering in your mind. Well, you know, if I go back to the lifestyle that I was living before, you know, we're selling them drugs and doing all this other stuff. But I go back to that lifestyle, maybe I can hit a lick. No, no, you can't hit nothing. You didn't hit nothing when you were doing it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Are you listening to me? But you'll always find yourself comparing yourself with the world. Why? Because I can't get this faith thing. And the reason why we're not getting the faith thing is because we're trying to process it with dial-up. Did y'all hear that? Okay. All right, moving on. Number two reason in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 real quick. Hebrews 11. Ooh, glory. Hallelujah. Father, I speak against high blood pressure right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare in the name of Jesus that from my spirit, man, that I can see it going down in the name of Jesus. And I can see it subsiding right now in the name of Jesus. I declare it over their lives right now in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus, I see it subsiding and bringing and coming into perspective in the name of Jesus. And I declare that those who are dealing with high blood pressure, that they won't continue to deal with high blood pressure pressure. I call out high cholesterol right now, and I speak against it by the authority that's invested in me in the name of Jesus. I see it by the Spirit of God, that anything that's in their body that's not supposed to be there, that is lining up with your word in the name of Jesus, glory to God. I speak against it. I'm a life-giving spirit, glory to God. I speak life. Hallelujah! You gotta be able to see yourself the way that you are seen as a born again believer. See yourself as a spirit that possesses a soul that lives inside of a human natural body. And once you see yourself as a spirit, do you see any sickness in your spirit? Do you see any disease in your spirit? Do you see high blood pressure in your spirit? Do you see any high cholesterol in your spirit? If you can't see it in your spirit, say what you can't see. Did you hear what I said? you got to be able to say what you cannot see in your spirit because when you say what you cannot see in your spirit, you won't be able to see it in your body either. And the church said, you got to hear what I'm telling you. You are not the natural body. That's not who we are. We look in the mirror all the time and we get confused into thinking that the sum total of who I am is what I can see in the mirror. No, you are invisible. You cannot even see you. You are a spirit that possesses a soul that lives inside of a human natural body. If you can't see any sickness in your, in your spirit, 
then dear God, don't tolerate it in your body. Don't tolerate it, not for another split second, glory to God. That is walking by faith. That's speaking by faith. That's speaking by faith. Calling those things that be not as though they were, glory to God. Are you listening to me? If your money don't line up the way you want it to line up, you got to see from the Spirit, glory to God, that you are blessed, glory to God, that you are wealthy, glory to God. You're already prosperous, glory to God. you got to see from the Spirit, because that's who you are. Your true identity is Spirit. You live in a body. If your spirit leaves your body, guess what? Your body no longer has life. What do you see in your spirit? Because whatever I see in my spirit, and you see by the word of God, you know, it gives me the opportunity to appear into the spirit because the word of God says that my word is spirit, glory to God. And now that I have the ability to appear into the spirit, I can look into the word and see what's on the inside of me, glory to God. He said healing is in me. He said peace is in me. He said joy is in me. He said prosperity is in me, glory to God. He said, I have to believe it, glory to God. Get settled in it. Get rooted in it. Get grounded in it. We're making the mistake as born-again believers. We look at ourselves in the mirror, and we just some, we just total ourselves up right there. That's who I am. No, you are not the natural man. There's something in the Word of God that's called the hidden man of the heart, glory to God. Why is he hidden? Because he's invisible. Are you listening to me? You can't even see yourself if the truth be told. Sickness don't dwell in your spirit. High blood pressure don't dwell in your spirit. Are you listening to me? Diabetes don't dwell in your spirit. It doesn't dwell in your spirit. And if it doesn't dwell in your spirit, don't tolerate it in your body. If it don't dwell in your spirit, don't tolerate it in your body. Now i got to see myself from who I am in the spirit, glory to God, that I'm connected with Christ. Dear God, does Christ have high blood pressure? Does he have diabetes? Does he have high cholesterol? Are you listening to me? If you don't see it in your spirit, and that's key, you've got to be able to see who you really are. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it says, So that I can see myself as I am seen. In other words, God sees you different. God does not see who you are in the flesh or in the natural. Matter of fact, He doesn't even like looking upon our flesh anyway. He said that when I see you, I see you as my son. And as I see you as my son, he said, now I need to, I need to be, you need to be able to see you like you are seen. Because once you can be able to see yourself as you are seen, then you'll begin to see the manifestation of what you believe in God for. Why? Because now, shoot, I know that I can lay my hands on the sick, glory to God, and they be raised, glory to God. They be healed, glory to God. Why? Because now I know that I am a spirit. I'm a life-giving spirit. Are you listening to me? Saints, we have almost missed it. We've almost missed it. We, as a born-again believer, dear God, that means that you have the God essence in you. The very power of God, the very life of God, dwells on the inside of us as born-again believers. You have the power of God. Glory to God. How many of you know, with God, somebody say, with God, all things are possible. Glory to God. All things. Somebody say all things. 
Dear God, we ain't going to tolerate nothing no more. If they don't like the way it looks in the natural, dear God, you got to go to your spirit man and see what it is that you're believing God for because I guarantee you it's already in there. Somebody say it's in there. The money you're looking for, guess what? He said it's in there. The peace you're looking for, he said it's in there. The joy you're looking for, he said it's in there. He said the promotion you're looking for is in there. He said the debt freedom that you're looking for, he said it's in there. What do you see? The devil's job is to distract you and keep you all busy on the internet, talking on the cell phone, doing things you ain't got no business doing on the internet. He wants to confuse you. He wants to befuddle your mind and keep you outwardly busy, focused on other things other than him. Are you listening to me? That's what his job is. Man, I'm here to tell you, I never met so many outwardly busy, born-again believers in this, in this time than ever before. That's a plan of God. I mean, that's a plan of the enemy to keep you busy. Amen? He doesn't ever want you to tap into your God essence. He doesn't want you to talk, tap into your spirit. He wants, you to, he wants to confuse you with the matrix that he has designed confuse you into believing that all that is before you is all that there is. But your faith allows you visibility. Glory to God! Your faith allows you visibility to where you can, you can see far beyond what's presented before you. Are you listening to me? Saints, we got to get this down packed. Because if we don't get it down pat, it will never amplify our witness. And if our witness is not amplified, then how... He said he's giving to everybody the ministry of reconciliation. Dear God, how can we win somebody to Christ if our lifestyle is raggedy? Raggedy. Amen. Did y'all hear me? We're looking like, who done it and why? We done, Are you born again? Oh, I don't know about it. I don't want to do that. Are you listening to me? We have to get it down pat. Guess what? Now here's key now. Because a lot of people try to flip that around because they're processing it with dial up again. They'll try to acquire stuff in order to have it or make it look like their witness is amplified. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is starting with character. Starting with your character. Are you listening to me? Because when you start with your character, then the stuff that you accumulate that he allows you to be a steward over, then you won't never lose none of that stuff. You ain't got to worry about no repo man coming to your house and repossessing your car and your motorcycle and your bike. and You ain't got to worry about none of that stuff, taking your house. and not, You ain't got to worry about none of that stuff. Why? Because I develop character first. Amen. 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 That's where love comes in. Amen. Love is a character attribute. And as a born-again believer, dear God, we got to learn how to love. And the church said, Lord, y'all just got me excited. Jesus, help me, Lord. Jesus. Okay, number three. Praise God. Uh, John chapter 10. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. We speak against that stuff. Every time you look in the mirror, every time that the doctor tries to give you a diagnosis, don't receive it. Use wisdom now. Don't receive it. If it ain't in your spirit, you don't have to tolerate it in your flesh. Did you hear that? Diabetes, high blood pressure. Let me do it like this. I mean... Because here's a big one, cancer. Cancer is running rampant in the land today. 
I speak against every demonic cancer cell in the name of Jesus by the Spirit of God that's invested in me. And I speak against it right now in the name of Jesus. That nobody who had no cancer in the name of Jesus, if you've been diagnosed with it, when you go back to your doctor, you won't have a trace of it in your body, glory to God. Do you believe it? You won't have a trace of it, glory to God. He says, speak the word only, glory to God. Some people think they got to have a hand laid on. No, you don't. I can speak the word and glory to God. The word, if you receive it, glory to God, it will deal with every cancer cell in your body. Here's an important key to that. You have to get from out of seeing you. Naturally. You got to get out of habit of seeing you naturally. You've got to learn how to distinguish the difference. You've got to learn how to see yourself from the inside out. Amen. We've been trained and conditioned to see ourselves from the inside, from the outside in. Thank you. Amen. We've been trained that way. Are you listening to me? You have to learn to see yourself from the inside out when it deals with the spirit. If you don't learn that right there, you'll never be able to walk by faith and not by sight. And you know what that means? We'll never be able to access the fullness of God's grace that he's made available to us. To where every, check this out. He said in the word, until all the families of the earth are blessed. That's what God's intention is for every born again believer. Did you hear that? What does that mean, blessed? That means that I am empowered to prosper in every area, in every arena of my life. In other words, my marriage is blessed, my money is blessed, my honey is blessed. Everything about me is blessed, glory to God. And because I am the blessed, glory to God, whatever I touch, glory to God, it's also blessed. That's what his intention was for the body of Christ. But we keep vacillating between two systems. We keep trying to do this system and that system. When that one don't work, then I can default to this one. No. He said, whenever you do that, you're shortchanging yourselves from the fullness of his blessings. Somebody say, I walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Glory to God. Are you listening to me? I thank you, Holy Ghost. And John 10 and 10, everybody there? All right, all right, all right. 10 and 10, it reads like this. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. And I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. In the Amplified it reads like this. For the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. That's God's desire for every born again believer. For us to enjoy life. And you have to ask yourself into a personal inventory, are you enjoying life? The third primary reason for us to have and have and walk by faith is because it is the foundational, it is the foundation for victorious living. It is the foundation for us to live the life that God always intended for us to live as born again believers. Amen. And as a born-again believer, we got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is so important that he's already settled it. And you, know, and you can write this down for the sake of time. First John chapter 5, he says that this is the faith that overcometh the world. And I have overcome the world in which this, this is the faith, that this is it that overcomes the world, which is our faith. And that's in First John chapter 5, verse 4. Amen. In other words... In order for us to live victoriously in this earth realm as a born-again believer, we have to live, we have to think, we have to talk, we have to walk by our faith. If we don't do it, we will fail. We will fail, check this out, and compare. We will fail and compare and compete with the world. Amen? When the world was supposed to be following after the church. I say the world was supposed to be following after the church. The church. Amen. Are you listening to me? All right now. All right. 
In the book of Romans chapter 4 verse 16, watch this. Romans 4, 16. Somebody say glory. glory. Are y'all learning anything this morning? All right. Watch this. And just say amen when you're there. It says, therefore, inheriting the promise is the outcome of faith. I'm going to read that one more time. Therefore, inheriting the promise is the outcome of faith, and it depends entirely on faith, in order that it might be given as an act of grace, unmerited favor, to make it stable and valid and guaranteed and guaranteed and guaranteed to all his descendants. Not only the devotees in the inheritance of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, who is thus the father of us all. He says, therefore, this is the outcome of faith. Our faith allows us to access the promises of God. Did y'all hear that? Our faith allows us to access the promises of God. It allows us to access the fullness of God's blessing. If we don't walk by faith and not by sight, then how can we access the full fullness of His benefits? Amen. As a born-again believer, it's time for us to do what we need to do in order to walk by faith and not by sight. And begin to... Sometimes you got to go against your own mindset. Because your natural mind will try to convince you of something contrary to what your spirit already knows. Why? Because it's been conditioned to that. That's why Paul shouts it from the rooftop, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? It's important to renew your mind because if you don't renew your mind, you won't get the faith thing. You won't understand faith. You won't know how to walk by faith and not by sight. You won't know how to do it. Amen? All right, all right, all right. Okay. In the book of John, chapter 6, verse 27, real quick. Y'all don't have turnitis yet, do you? All right. I don't know if I'll be able to finish, but I believe y'all getting it. Amen. John chapter 6, verse 27, it reads like this. In the Amplified, Stop toiling and doing and producing for food that perishes and decomposes in the using, but strive and work and produce rather for the, the lasting food which endures continually unto eternal life. The Son of Man will give you, furnish you that, for God the Father has authorized and certified him that he, and put his seal in, of endorsement upon him. Then the disciples said to Jesus, then they said, What are we to do that we may habitually be working the works of God? What are we to carry out? To, what, are, what are we to do to carry out what God requires? And Jesus responded in verse 29. Jesus replied, This is the work, this is the service that God asks of you, that you believe in the one whom he has sent, that you cleave to, trust in, rely on, and have faith in his messenger. Did you hear that? He says that this is your belief. This is what you're supposed to be doing as a new creature in Christ. As a new creature in Christ, your primary prerequisite is to believe in the one who he has sent. That's the first measure of your faith. That's the first job and responsibility of our faith, of the measure that you have been given, is to believe in the Son and what he has done. Amen. Once you believe in the Son of God and what he has done, please understand me, now I can go to another level and I can begin to try to remove a mountain. But there's no sense in trying to remove a mountain if you don't believe in the Son and what, he's, what he has already done. Amen? As a born-again believer, this is something that is required. This is something that we must do as born-again believers. We have to be settled. We have to be rooted and grounded in the Son of God and what he has done. If you don't know him, if you don't know what he's done, if you are not convinced, because like I said before, I don't think that we really have a, a sin problem in the body of Christ. Sin is not the problem in the body of Christ. Believing is the problem in the body of Christ. Because if you believe right, it will adjust your character. Amen? You believe right, you, we won't do some of the stuff that we've been doing. We won't do that stuff. Why? Because I believe right. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt what 
Jesus did for me. And because of what he did, I'm going to adjust myself the way I need to adjust myself. And the church said. Did y'all get that? All right. All right. Well, for the sake of time, I want to show you this because this is a very important key. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. In the book of Second Kings, Second Kings chapter 6, real quick. Quicker, quick. Second Kings. Second Kings chapter 6. You say amen when you're there. 6 and 15. I've got to, sh- I got to show you this right here. This is a situation where Elijah and his servant were surrounded by, um, I believe, the Syrian army. But let's check this out. In verse 15, it reads like this. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city of both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Now, in layman's terms, that means, what in the world are we going to do now? In other words, they were hiding out and all of a sudden when he woke up in the morning time, he saw that they were surrounded all the way around him and there was no way out. It didn't look like he was, there was no way out. They looked bleak. It looked like he was at a Red Sea situation. And Elijah responded, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Did y'all hear that? Around about Elisha. He said that, bottom line, without faith, it's impossible for you to bring into focus what is invisible to the natural eye. you got to hear that. Check this out. Without faith, you will always default to fear. Did y'all hear that? Without faith, you will always default to fear. You notice in the beginning, that he did like this. Alas, Master, dear God, what are we going to do? And uh, like the first thing he said was fear not. Why? Because he didn't have faith. If he would have had faith, he would have already saw that greater is he that is with me than he that is in the world. Amen. But your faith allows you to bring into focus what is not visible to the naked eye. And you have to begin to see your faith like that. In other words, the devil has created a matrix through the education system, through the judicial system, through the political system. He has created a matrix for everybody. And he does not want you to be able to see through or see beyond that matrix. The only way that you'll be able to see through or beyond that matrix is you've got to be able to do it by your faith. Your faith gives you divine visibility. Are you listening to me? It is imperative that we begin to walk by faith and not by sight. Because if the truth be told, there's... How many of you know that you can't see radio waves? You can't see no radio wave. You can't see satellite wave. How many of you got cell phones? How many of you got? How many of y'all have ever got a text from anybody? How is that possible? Are you listening to me? You got to understand something that is the same way with your faith. Amen. It's like even though you know there's some things that are in the invisible realm. But the only way that you have access into the invisible realm, you've got to do it from your invisible nature. You can't access what's in the invisible realm from your natural nature. You have no business there. Are you listening to me? The only way that you can get, you might see something in the invisible realm. In other words, once you begin to look in the, in, in the, by faith, you might be able to detect something and pick something up on your radar because now you're doing it from the realm of the Spirit. And now that you see it, it's like you can't get it over here in this natural realm unless you reel that thing in by your Spirit. Amen? 
You got to be able to reel that thing in by your spirit. If you don't, if you try to reel it in by your natural, it's not going to work. Amen. You got to hear that by the spirit. You cannot. There is something that is called an invisible realm. Check this out. How many of you know that the word of God references God as the invisible God? You cannot even in worship or you pray to an invisible God unless you do it from your invisible nature. Amen. And that's the same thing why he says about the, he, he says that there are some things that's going on in the invisible that your faith can detect, but your natural eye won't pick up. So it's imperative that we walk by faith and not by sight. Once we learn how to walk by faith and not by sight, then it brings into focus. Our faith is a decloaking mechanism. Did y'all hear that? Our faith is a decloaking mechanism. And what that means is you have the ability by faith to decloak that which is invisible. To where now, even though I don't see it in my natural, all I got to do is look in the Spirit, glory to God, and my faith will decloak whatever it is that I'm looking for. And now that I'm able to decloak it, now I can call those things that be not as though they were, glory to God. Why? Because I see what it is I'm calling. I see what I'm calling. Are you listening to me? I can see it now. Why? Because I'm looking from the Spirit. We have got to get out of the habit of looking through the flesh and the eyes of the natural Your faith works as a sixth sense. In the natural, the matrix that has been designed by the devil is designed to appeal and to stimulate and attract your five senses. Are you listening to me? But when, as a born-again believer, you have what's called a sixth sense, called faith, that enables you to see beyond what it is that the devil presents to you. Are you listening to me? To where now you're no longer fool, you're no longer trick, you're no longer bamboozle, you're no longer none of that stuff. Why is that? Because now I can see by my faith. And guess what? Now you can pick it up on your radar. If you can, whatever you can pick up on your faith radar, guess what? That's a telltale sign that it belongs to you. If it didn't belong to you, you wouldn't be able to pick it up. If, you, if it did not belong to you, you won't be able to pick it up. Amen. You can read it in your own time. Hebrews chapter 1. In the Amplified Bible it says that faith gives you the ability to perceive as real fact what is not revealed to the natural senses. Faith gives you the ability to perceive as real fact. In other words, dear God, I can touch this thing now. Amen. In other words, it's real to me, glory to God. And now that it's real to me, I saw it in the Spirit, and it's real. We get confused because we think in our mind, we think in our mind that just because I can touch this right here, that is more real than those things that are in the, in the invisible realm. No, 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 no. That which is visible came from... Invisible stuff. Amen. You know, in the book, in the, in the book of Luke, it talks about you know, you know, the, the Pharisees came to Jesus and said, "Where is the kingdom?" And he said, "You won't be able to say that the kingdom's over here, the kingdom's over there. You won't be able to say none of that stuff because it's in the invisible realm." But check this out. One thing that I can assure you of: I am the door of the kingdom. And for the mere fact that I am the door, if the door showed up, you better also know that the kingdom's right behind me. In other words, you just can't see the kingdom. In other words, there's part of the kingdom, which was the door that manifested itself and appeared for a season of time, while the other part of the kingdom was left concealed. Are you listening to me? So you have to know me on the shadow of a doubt. If the door showed up, then the kingdom showed up. Glory to God. In order to get into the kingdom. That's why he says you can come in and you can go out. Glory to God. And you'll always find pasture. Why is that? 
Because the kingdom is already here, glory to God. We're surrounded by the kingdom of God. Are you listening to me? It's already here. What does that mean? Now that I can see the Spirit, now I can see in the Spirit because I know that I am a Spirit. Now that I can see it, I can go into the kingdom and I can go to the stove and I can pull out my currency, which is my faith, and I can go to the stove and I can buy whatever it is that I want from the stove because I got the currency of my faith. And the church said, you can get whatever you want. Are you listening to me? He said, it is all about the only way you can bring into focus that which is invisible when you begin to realize that you are invisible. You got to realize that you're invisible. Invisible, you got to, you serve and you worship an invisible God. You have access to an invisible kingdom. Amen. You have the ability to do invisible stuff. Amen. And as a born again believer, I'm here to tell you, it is time that we begin to walk by faith and not by sight. Why? That is the method of operation for every born again believer. If you don't do this right here, then we'll always be competing and we'll always be comparing ourselves to the world. We'll always be trying to catch up to them. No, man, please. No, 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 no. Are you listening to me? Now imagine this. You try to catch up to them operating in their system. Do you know that it was never intended for a born-again believer to catch up to those people who are not born again? That's not how the devil designed the matrix. He didn't design it that way. No, the only way that you can exceed them is that you've got to be able to do it from your own spirit and then it'll manifest in this natural realm. Did y'all learn anything this morning? Stand to your feet. Give God some praise in here. Shout hallelujah. Your faith gives you full access. Your faith gives you full access. Amen. It gives us full access to what has already been accomplished for you in your eternal past. Amen. Our problem is whether or not we're going to walk by faith in our current present. Whether or not we're going to walk by faith and not by sight in order to get this thing. Amen. Because I guarantee you, once we learn this, once we learn how to walk by faith and not by sight, then I'm here to tell you that we'll begin to see the manifestations of everything that we're believing God for. Amen. You know, I didn't get to cover everything, but I think you got it. Amen. When you look in the mirror, stop looking at who you are in the natural. Whenever we do that, we limit ourselves. No, that's not who you are. Because if who, if who you were left your natural body, you wouldn't be able to look at yourself in the mirror. Amen. No, you wouldn't. So as a born-again believer, do it from the inside out. I need to teach on that message, the invisible man. Amen. Matter of fact, I think I will. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because the invisible man always walks by faith, not by sight. We think by faith. Amen. We want to thank y'all so much for just being patient with me as I delivered that message. And I pray that you were blessed this morning. Hallelujah. Those of you who are watching the broadcast, thank you so much for tuning in to the broadcast. And I want you to know that you were in the right place at the right time. Glory to God. And I guarantee you, if you employ these words that I have shared with you today, that it will change your life forever and ever and ever. If you would like to become an iChurch member, click on the icon and so that you can fill out that form so that we can get you inducted into the family. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Saints, this has to become real to us. Amen. And the thing about it is, it's not only for grown people. Are you young folk in here?